You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey deep into a wondrous land whose bounds are that of imagination. There's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Elder Scrolls Facebook group. Hello! So I have a question I have a slight feeling I shouldn't ask, in part because I think it would have a very short or boring answer. Or because of the kind of discussion, aka argument, it might spark. Or also because it isn't exactly related to Elder Scrolls lore, which is why I haven't asked this before. I'll just delete this if I'm asked to. I apologize in advance, however I'm curious and confused seeing how people talk about it when they mention it, or rather, him. Who is this Zarek? You. I've seen you. Could it be lore? Well, hello everybody, this is Zarek Zahakaran. I was previously in sales, and since then I started posting YouTube videos for fun, and from there I moved into streaming. And so now I'm pretty much a YouTuber, slash live streamer, slash freelance writer. I go by the name Zarek Zahakaran Online, and although I love all kinds of games, be it first-person shooters or side-scrolling platformers, grindy Dynasty Warriors games, or even the occasional Japanese RPG. For whatever reason, what stuck, at least as far as the community is concerned, is Elder Scrolls. You see, I got started in Elder Scrolls 1 The Arena, back when it was new, and I thought it was crap, and so I quit. Then I played the second one, Daggerfall, and I fell in love with the series. It's what made me a fan. Now, I was fairly sad when they dumbed down a lot of the gameplay elements in order to make Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, but I did see a better story in Morrowind, and so I forgave it, and I actually played more hours in Morrowind than I did Daggerfall. Morrowind is to this day my most played Elder Scrolls game, although my Steam would tell you that I played over 2,000 hours of Skyrim, so apparently I've got a lot of time to waste in open world games. I married with a wife and cat, we are both fans of classic fantasy, science fiction, and Japanese cartoons. I originally made my first about four or six thousand subscribers on YouTube because I went ahead and reviewed some of those those dirty sex mods from that website Lover's Lab. Because it was amusing to do so and I enjoyed the the true reactions that I got of just like, <gasps> this exists! As if they'd never seen that kind of thing on the internet before. And when those reactions faded and people stopped talking about it, that's when I stopped giving a shit about that, and there went that. From there I started talking about the Elder Scrolls lore, mainly because of how disappointed I was in it. I tried to go back and recapture what I really loved about it. So I did a short series where I went through some of my favorite hits in the lore, as it were. Now, in researching the lore, of course, I came across Michael Kirkbride's coda. Let, let me say something. Uh, Michael Kirkbride is a very talented author. And if his work on Minecraft story mode or the Telltale Batman is any indicator, he certainly is keeping busy. But he would be most known in the Elder Scrolls lore community for having written most of Marwyn's lore. Now, Ken Rolston, of course, the creative lead at the time, made sure that most of that was subjective and not set in stone. So when we talk about Anu or Padume or any of that stuff, None of that is actually set in stone. All of it is subject to a literary term we refer to as the unreliable narrator, which is A-OK. -okay. The unreliable narrator is something that's used extremely well in literature, and it was extended to the Elder Scrolls fairly well. However, as time went on, it became used as a band-aid to explain away bad design decisions, just like dragon breaks and other elements of the lore used to excuse what is the ever dumbing down and complete disregard of a continuity. But who needs a continuity when everything is subject to the unreliable narrator, dragon breaks, and good old-fashioned cultural drift? Let all the good ideas just pour out of the franchise and 
dumb it down for the kiddies. So yeah, I've been kind of a critic of the series. You know, it, it's best to critique the things you like because you like them. Put the passion into it and talk about it how you'd like it to be. That's my fan fiction. And when I do Elder Scrolls videos, for example, I will very often say, this is my personal interpretation of the lore. But either way, that's me. I do opinion pieces, left, right, up, and down. I'm a jackass, obviously, narcissistic as hell. And uh, you guys, haters, fans, everyone, all play into that narcissism when you talk about me. So, speaking of which, let's scroll down the list because apparently, Xerx the Hakron is a twat. But in all seriousness, he's a prolific YouTuber. I'm prolific, eh? Who considers himself a lorebeard. A lorebeard? What the hell is a lorebeard? Who the hell would want to be a lorebeard? That's like being a neckbeard. Who would consider themselves a neckbeard? Who would consider themselves a lorebeard? I mean, when I think of lorebeard, I think of Binky the Clown from Garfield. Something that's laughable. Comedic. Seriously. But yes, he's incredibly narcissistic about it all. And honestly has a shaky concept on the deeper aspect of the lore. Yeah, because I tend to reject most of the deeper concepts of the lore. But we'll get into that later. He is notoriously adamant that anything outside of the games doesn't count as real lore. Despite having no real reasons for his decision. Well, let me tell you something. Actually, we got lots of out-of-game lore. And I talk about it all the time. I reference it in my lore videos. But I also say it's my personal interpretation of the lore. It's my personal interpretation of the lore. It's my personal interpretation of the lore. Do you know what that means? It means it's my fan fiction. There is canon, which is what is present in the games. And there is fan fiction. Just because you're in the sphere of Elder Scrolls does not exempt you from proper definitions. It doesn't it cause you to be in some kind of higher art form where you're in this open sourced world of everything you want is legitimate. Ultimately, people are going to say what is what based on the, what is present in game. Everything that we take from out of game sources is in fact a piece of fan fiction. Now I reference fan fiction all the time, Michael Kirkbride's fan fiction known as Coda. I actually am a firm believer that fan fiction can surpass the original material. And I think that fan fiction authors should be supported if you like their works. But just taking your headcanon and putting it onto a forum post about my coda says this that doesn't make it legitimate and it does not overwrite what happens within the games i have a series called what if skyrim was good what if oblivion was good what if morrowind was good and what if elder scrolls online was good it's part of my ideal elder scrolls series if you check the playlist it's tagged fan fiction because I rewrite the story to my own fanfiction-y whims. But at no point can you look at my What If Skyrim Was Good and say, this is in fact how it was. Nor can you speak of your coda and say, this is how it is. And I get that a lot. I get people telling me that sword singers used the equivalent of a nuke to sink Yakuda. In fact, they've given me very, very specific names for it. In fact, they've gone and told me that the aliens are birdmen because they wore feathers. Nobles wore feathers in fucking Europe. It didn't make them bird people. But I am having way too much fun responding to this and I'm not scrolling down the list. So let's scroll down the list some more and have some more fun. All right. <clears throat> He prefers not to be called a lorebeard. Yeah, because I'm not Binky the Clown. But I won't argue with the narcissistic thing. He's an ass. Yes, he is. He accepts the OOG, or out-of-game lore, as lore. He just doesn't see them as canon. 
Correct. Absolutely correct. By the way, canon doesn't actually matter if it doesn't matter to you, but it still exists, and you can't just wish it away by shunning it and pretending it doesn't. Too many people are in the mindset that the Elder Scrolls is objective. I've said it a thousand times. So on and so forth. I, you know, the Elder Scrolls, what happens in the games is objective. And what is written in the books are objectively written in the books. Now, the person who wrote that book could have been wrong. But very often, it's not that they were wrong in a story sense. It's that the developers decided that direction isn't the direction we want to go with the story. Which made sense in Elder Scrolls 2 when most of the lore was written by beta testers and community posters on the Bethesda forums. Back then, it made sense. It made a lot of sense. Be think about it. I mean, <laughs> we have Ebonarm, who was an awesome deity. They, they ended up erasing him from the canon. You know, we, we can argue that it was because of the warp in the West, the after effects that caused Tiber Septum to replace him within the mythic. But in reality, it's just that the authors didn't see that level of fanfiction-y, you know, man who stands between both armies and says, go home, um, to be something they wanted in their storyline. And I understand it. Ultimately, a lot of the early lore was fanfiction. And they weeded it out. They pulled it out bit by bit until it didn't matter or it was considered subjective. The Elder Scrolls produced as video games first. Because you can have the best story in the world, but if the, the gameplay is shit, then you have failed as a game developer. Period. You might as well be watching a movie or reading a book. In fact, that's my wife's main complaint about the JRPGs that I play, is that she would have preferred to have seen this as a Japanese cartoon without the grinding that you have to do between major story sections. And I can't fault her for that. I mean, if you want an engaging story, go read a book. Although the Elder Scrolls books, specifically the uh, Lord of Souls and... Oh, I forgot the other one. I'll remember it later, but they're both by Gregory Keyes, and they're some of his worst work he's ever done, which is unfortunate. I mean, check out Blood Knight or Born Queen for some better Gregory Keyes novels. So, th this guy would go on to say that, you know, all history isn't laid out and accepted as objectively true, historical sources subject to bias, misunderstanding, fallacy, just like in real life. But, those statements were made within the games. You have to understand something. If you want to say that the Thalmor want to unmake the world, which which I, I've said in my Puma Theories video, by the way, where I just rambled about the lore for shits and giggles, and it offended a whole ton of people, and I had fun with it, just like I'm having fun now. The thing is that you can't quantify that within the actual game. Michael Kirkbride's Aldmeri Commentary where he explains that the upstart Talos must be removed from the mythic, and then the dragon will be the ours to unbind, and that humanity must be removed so far that the thought of them would not be repeated. That is an example of fan fiction. There is no source in the game that says they want to do that, that they want to destroy the world and unmake it. I mean, it, it, it makes them sound a lot cooler, which is why that plotline went into my ideal Elder Scrolls 6 where I talked about that particular thing and how an old Elnefe was actually behind the Thalmor. He his powers didn't fade for some reason. And then we, we get into the rem the like the ruins of the Crystal Tower and, and all the this this really cool shit would happen. Well it's good storytelling it is not canon within the games. Just like your favorite coda is fan fiction. So is my ideal Elder Scrolls series. Oh crap! Canon does not exist, just different levels of good ideas. The dog ate Michael Kirkbride's words and puked it up all over the carpet! No, seriously, he's just regurgitating something Michael Kirkbride said. And it doesn't have meaning. Canon doesn't exist, just different levels of good ideas. 
For you. For you, it doesn't exist. However, for people who want to stand and make an authoritative statement about what did or didn't happen within the Elder Scrolls, it matters a lot. You cannot stand with authority and speak on something as a learned individual without specifically parsing out hearsay and other people's opinions from what is factually true. And what is factually true is what has been put in the video games. Whether it is subjective or not in the context of the video game doesn't matter because it's present in the video game. Therefore, it can be considered for absolute fact. Whereas something in the out-of-game realms is in the realm of fan fiction and hasn't even been canonized to the extent where it can be considered for possible canonity. Ultimately, I got into a very large discussion with a guy about intellectual property rights. Because as an author, I have them. And I don't write Elder Scrolls lore, I merely produce videos about it. Ultimately... My fan fictions are merely tribute videos in my own way. Yes, some people see it as me hating on the original material, but that is actually my way of expressing my love for the franchise, by criticizing it and pointing out how I personally thought it could have been better. That kind of critical thought is something that a open-sourced, oh, th th there's only different levels of good ideas. They're also bad ideas. And there are terrible ideas. Yes, I'm a jackass for presenting that to you. Not everyone gets a medal. You have to cross the finish line first. Likewise, my fan fiction is just fan fiction. Just like your fan fiction's just fan fiction. Andrew replies, Michael Kirkbride's statement. That's correct. I worship Michael Kirkbride. Yes. No, uh, actually, here's the deal. If Michael Kirkbride were to actually produce, uh, like, a Kickstarter for a game or book or movie or comic book, whatever series that did not take place in the Elder Scrolls universe because he does not have the intellectual property rights to it, I would pay into that Kickstarter at least $60, you know, which would be the full price of a game typically, but maybe more. You know, I, I, I go for a collector's signed edition from him because here's the thing. He's a good writer. I mean, admittedly, my favorite work of his is actually the Akirian Heresy because it throws a monkey wrench into what everyone assumes is cut and dry. That is an example of really good storytelling. The problem is, is that he doesn't like it. He thought it wasn't complete enough. But I looked at his other works and it's full of obtuse vagaries and bad, bad terms that had have no meaning within the English language, but he just made them up and made them sound fancy. He doesn't do that in the Akirian Heresy. He just says what he means. And that's really cool because that shows what kind of author he can be. And let's face it, he's Minecraft story mode and uh, Batman. He's obviously doing tangible work that is worth something now. He's working for Telltale. I actually like Minecraft Story Mode. I should play it on a live stream sometime just for fun. But yeah, so let's let's keep going down this list. So you remember when you first introduced to the Elder Scrolls lore community, you read something that there was established canon as in every other franchise, and it's absolutely true. What happens in the games is canon. Everything else is subjective. The problem is, is you cannot go and say your subjective ideas are facts. Now me... You'll find that in my, all of my lore videos, I go, this is my personal interpretation of the lore. This is my personal interpretation of the lore. And that's how I talk about my fan fiction. But some of the things that still confuse you are the wrong ideas you got because of that person. No. No, 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 no. Morrowind is a game with actual events that happen. There's, there's a canon going on. A canon storyline. Morrowind is a story of revenge. It's a story of not only Azura's revenge, but it's, it's Nerevar's revenge through Azura, through your rebirth. You are taking vengeance upon the fallen god, Dagoth Ur, who, you know, maybe not a god, maybe, maybe just a Chimer slash Dunmer slash Ashman, you know, but he, he's powered up by the heart of Lorcan, and therefore he has transcended 
at least as far as we know. Of course, the thing is the lore surrounding Dagothar does not actually fit the game mechanics. And I think that if Marwind were made today, we would see a lot more cinematic storytelling. And Dagothar would have done things that were utterly impossible. He wouldn't have just been a creature who stood there and went, Dagothar welcomes you. I offer you the first blow. No, I imagine he would have channeled the power of a Kulikon and done these moves where he floated through the air and did crazy stuff because he was a living god. But they didn't do that because they were limited by the technology of their time. And Marwind was extremely limited, which is funny because Marwind accomplished more in its small space in its small storyline than later iterations did with their cinematic storytelling. Which is interesting. It, it makes you wonder what happens if you applied Morrowind design elements to an, uh, a more updated engine that was capable of cinematic storytelling. What kind of uh, adventure you could get. Either way, my point is, ultimately, that the Elder Scrolls has canon elements that if you seek to be an authority on it, then you know that these actions happened. Jigalag said to you, perhaps you will grow to your station. That's pretty cool. Especially the fact that then Sheogorth references all the Oblivion stuff. Either way, rambly bambly aside, he's also a troll. He did a video where he said Coda out of game text roll bullshit and then put a very disclaimer at the end saying he doesn't actually believe what he's saying. Yes, yes, I am very trollish in my nature. And I think that's because I think people get overly defensive about this. And if my saying that your fanfiction isn't canon offends you, causes damage to your community, then your community isn't nearly as strong as you think it is. And you need to question why you feel so defensive about it. Because ultimately, canon doesn't matter if you don't let it. You can tell your own fanfiction storylines in your own canon. No, no, seriously. Uh, canon can be thought of more or less as a continuity. Now, uh, we had, say, Tenshi Muyo, which is a Japanese cartoon, where you had Tenshi Universe, which was the television series. You had the Tenshi Muyo OVA. And then you had Tenshi in Tokyo and various other spin-offs. The, the Tenshi in Tokyo is cancerous and should never be watched by anybody. But Tenshi Moyo is shorter and deeper than Tenshi Universe, which was ultimately aimed at a television audience. Yet, they both use the same characters in the same universe, and yet there are huge plot and character differences within how the characters act and the way the storyline develops because those are two separate canons, two separate continuities. And ultimately, if you want to create your own continuity in your own universe, then you have your own fan fiction, which isn't a dirty word. Welcome to fanfiction.net. I have a pillow with his face on it. <laughs> if, if, check out welcome to fanfiction.net. But, but all that cringiness aside, Fan fiction isn't bad by its nature. It's just the people who create fan fiction typically create it as an escape mechanism in order to play out their fantasies. And when they do that, they typically create Mary or Marty Sue's. In their tongue, he's Dovahkiin, Dragonborn. Now, there is fan fiction that doesn't do any of that, and it can be very, very good. It's out there on the internet right now. I recommend going to check it out. But calling it Apocrypha and trying to say, well, the entire Elder Scrolls universe is open source. Try telling that to ZeniMax Media's lawyers when you create a compilation and sell your coda. Well, no one's trying to sell their coda. Yeah, because they can't because it's not theirs, because it's a derivative work of something they do not own and they do not have the rights to. You, you see what I'm getting at here? Fan fiction isn't bad, but you're, you're living in a dream world if you think that you are 
freed from all the responsibilities of having a derivative work just because it's your coda. Bethesda is very good at respecting their fan base to an extent. I recommend you find out what happened to the Doomarl guy when he decided to make a competing product called Jupiter Hell. They went after Doom RL. They didn't go after Jupiter Hell. But because he created a competitive product, all of a sudden, they went after his fan material. And if you today said that you could make a better Skyrim and you started to actually do it, all your fan material up till then is fair game. Now, let's move on. His fan base is the most toxic thing in the community. Well, here's the thing. You're calling it the community, but in fact, it's actually a collection of many communities with many different thoughts all fixated on the same thing. It's like Christianity, for example. You know, there are countless branches of Christianity that all believe in Jesus Christ. However, they have very different ways about going about their worship with very different tenets and I think that Elder Scrolls lore could be, per, uh, could have a parallel with religion, really, because ultimately we all think about it in different ways. I critique the Elder Scrolls from the perspective of an author, not a game designer, because I've consulted for indie games, but that is not the same thing as being a game designer, I am not. But you see where these different schools of thought come from, and ultimately, Michael Kirkbride has been erected as this idol, and his coda, and you, you just, uh, Billy there recited his scripture earlier, where there is no canon, only different levels of good ideas. That is an example of his scripture. Uh, Michael Kirkbride, the prophet of uh, Elder Scrolls lore. But now you see how that works. My coda versus canon video that this guy is complaining about it's part of my Nitpick Land series, by the way. My Nitpick Land series also includes a w little part of Fallout 4 where I say that because Dog gets renamed to Dog Meat, even though I purposefully avoided this particular quest that changed his name, that it ruined Dog Meat forever. I also did another one about how Bethesda is racist against Khajiits, and they will misrepresent them and how they they secretly hate Khajiits and so on and so forth so uh, w when you see that um that, that coda you know uh that me being a troll yeah it's my nitpick land series what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> either way either way my fan base is the most toxic thing in the community let's go let's go back to that really quick um, so if you mention ESO or anything that qualifies out of game, you're, you'll get ripped apart as you've committed some horrible hate crime. What are you talking about? I mention the many-headed Talos all the time. I mention, like, Mayroon's Dagon being the, the Leaper Demon King. I mention all that shit. And nobody gives a crap, except when they do. Except when they want to be authoritative. When they want to speak with authority about the lore, and then they say... No, no, uh, that's fan fiction. Ignore it. And, I, and I've had, you know, when I when I did my rambling video, my Puma Theories video, I'm like, a lot of people came back with that. Like, that's not canon lore. And I, I don't care <laughs> that that was a rambling video. So, ultimately, ESO, on the other hand, uh, let us all remember the, the quote by Schick. <laughs> Chim chimney chim chim cherry. A sweep is as lucky as lucky can be. Chim chimney chim chimney chim chim cheru. That said that they think of previous games as fanciful trails because in ESO they're giving you the real world of Tamriel. Could it be lore? There are people in the lore community that dismiss that, but Schick has one job, and it's not to write lore. Schick's job is to take whatever the developers decide on, and then to write lore that justifies it. Because remember, Elder Scrolls Online is an MMO shop. It completely lacks the culture 
that the these provinces are supposed to have. It completely lacks elements these places are supposed to have. It has things that are should be only in Skyrim. And ultimately, what he does is he writes little books like Subtropical Cyrodiil. This book explains that Cyrodiil was never a jungle to begin with. <laughs> and so, yeah, I don't have much respect for the job Shik does. Don't get me wrong, the man, the man, he's an actor, he's a geek, he, he manages to put on, I would say, a fun persona. And he's able to write, obviously, because he wrote Subtropical Serial, but I mean, when you have a director telling you, a game director, telling you to justify this, or justify that, or make sure this works, you're limited in what you can write. So, I don't have respect for his job. I have respect for him as a person. And that's a very, very different thing. Ultimately, the ZeniMax Online Studios Lore Master position is a glorified band-aid factory for fixing the gushing wounds that the uh, developers have... Uh, left when they stitched this thing together out of Elder Scrolls parts. So yes, I am a giant piece of shit. Well, I am giant actually. Let's let's zoom out a bit. But yeah, um, who knows dick about lore? Dick. Look, look at look at this um this little portrait he's got there. Like if anyone would be named Dickens, it would definitely be him. But uh, let's continue. Let's continue. Juvenile jokes aside. Personally, I don't mind him. I think don't think he's a complete piece of shit. He knows the lore enough to inform the less informed. Like the Sky Babies! Hey, if you've only played Skyrim and nothing else, you're a Sky Baby. I, I usually use the term Sky Kitties, but um, actually I don't use either term. I, I don't really care. I, I kind of laugh at it because, you know... There are things you should know if you played Oblivion, should know if you played Marwood. Not, not if you've read the lore books, okay? I'm not talking about reading the lore books. I'm not talking about... I'm just talking about doing the quest lines. Like, there's some there's some obvious shit that you would know if you played Elder Scrolls 2 that most of the lore communities doesn't seem to understand. And, um, well, the real lore started at Morrowind! Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's your coda, I'm assuming. Daggerfall has some of what I consider to be the best bits of foundation that Bethesda threw away. Kind of makes me sad. But, you know, that that's pretty much how it is. So, he may not accept all works as canon, but it's his head canon after all. Yet, I'm okay with the out-of-game works provided that we label them properly as fanfiction. Except for, of course, the, the two novels by Gregory Keyes, they're still canon. His attitude against out-of-game sources makes him shit for beginners. In other words, beginners need to be indoctrinated into this, it's an open-sourced lore. How about you get in front of a notepad, or like a Google Docs document, or even a pad of paper, and write your own story. Just come up with your own characters. You know, um, may, you can even base them off other characters. Here, here's a quick cheat sheet. All you need to do is give them a like, a dislike, and a quirk. And that actually is like the cheater's guide to making characters. As long as you don't base them off of yourself, you're probably going to make something that is about on par with what the Elder Scrolls has. If you know a bit of history and you want to do some allegories, then, all of a sudden, you're a deep writer. And it's, that's not really true. <laughs> but, but people think you are. And people create connections in their heads where there was none. For example, I had a story about a, a guy named Hadriel. And I explained his history. And someone else said, Oh, you got him from the, the Roman Emperor! I didn't actually, but I see the parallel now. I, I, I still didn't get him from that, but, you, you know, I can, I can definitely see the parallel, so there we go. Either way, uh, the fact that he presents everything, even his headcanon, as fact, he's a piece of shit. 
This is my personal interpretation of the lore. This is my personal interpretation of the lore. This is my per every episode of the lore series. Go f yourself, Jonathan. So Billy shouted, fair enough. And sounds like he'd confuse beginners even more. Dickens says he does. Considers his head cannons, but disregards Coda and other OG? That doesn't make sense, lol. He sounds confused. You guys are beyond saving. Could it be law? Could it be law? This is bullshit. Zarek is literally the most informed there is, fucking idiots. When 95% of the Lorebeards say otherwise, Lorebeards Binky the Clown, I'd recommend that you rethink who's the idiot here. Here we find a member of Zarek's fanbase in their natural habitat, communicating through guttural grunts and screeches, and drooling slightly. Ha ha ha, nah man, I'm just kidding, ha ha ha. They're basically jerking off now. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what's going on here. Digital wankery. He's an unreliable person in a very bad way when it comes to lore, simply because he's biased. Everyone's biased. Especially people who love Coda, who create Coda, who label their fanfiction Apocrypha. Those people are biased as well. People who worship Michael Kirkbride are biased. People who hate Michael Kirkbride are biased. His excuse is that Bethesda legal right is only canon, but we know Lawrence confirm everything is subjective. Lawrence? Lawrence? <laughs> Yes, Lawrence, the other games in the Elder Scrolls series are fanciful tales. Now they're giving us the real world of Tamriel. That's the Lawrence we know all about. Actually, he works for ZeniMax Online Studios. He doesn't actually work for Bethesda, although they're both published under the same house. Now, if we want to talk about canon specifically elder scrolls online is canon but then it directly contradicts things that happen later and if 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 we go ahead and use the unreliable narrator for all those occurrences if we use dragon break for all those occurrences it's just terrible writing so what is it is it terrible writing or is it not canon or is it questionable canon i, I don't even care again th there are different levels of good ideas and then there are terrible ideas and putting Coda into the Elder Scrolls is a terrible idea. Did I mention earlier that I would kickstart a Michael Kirkbride created series in his own universe that's not the Elder Scrolls? You know why I'd do that? Because his ideas are great. They're just not befitting the Elder Scrolls. There is a huge tonal dissonance between what a fantasy game is. And yes, yes, we, we can do the age-old argument like the old author said about how science is magic to people who are no... Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's just... You're taking a fantasy series and you're crapping all over it. That's, that's what the television heads, that's what the superheroes, that's what everything that Coda brings to the table, this multiverse uh, brings to the table. It is... It devalues a video game series that is present here. And this collaborative thought space is actually very useful. And you could actually get some real writing done and actually make things of value that would go forward into the future as works that outlive yourself. But you won't, because you just consider it your coda. And it's fun for the moment. Kind of like my live streams, I guess. <laughs> It's comparable, really. I mean, just, just me fucking around in Fallout 4 with some uh, questionable mods. A hundred people watching me. It's about equivalent to someone scribbling about how the uh, Aliens were actually bird people on the TS lore subreddit. He has his opinions, but I don't think he's as awful as people are making him out to be. He volunteered at Project Tamriel around the time I did and is passionate about the Elder Scrolls. He isn't refined in lore, as some of the people on TES lore are in this group, but you don't hold it against him. He has a big following, though, and when he criticizes, say, Coda, that ripples to a larger audience. Yes, yes, it does. It does ripple to a larger audience. 
And I think that's because ultimately I challenge people to think for themselves. And I want people to see both sides of the issue. A collaborative thought space is amazing when you're not piggybacking off of someone else's intellectual property, who, by the way, does not relinquish control of it. The Elder Scrolls is a trademark. And the moment, the moment it gets threatened with generalization, everything's going to get shut down. Because business is business. I'm a jackass. And actually, I uh, really am passionate about Tamriel Rebuilt for Marwind. I absolutely talk with the folks at Project Tamriel, and I'll continue to do so. And I'm actively consulting for two of the teams in Beyond Skyrim. I'm not telling them that their out-of-game references can't be used. I'm not telling them that. In fact, I'm suggesting out-of-game references because mods are not canon. Mods are a version of fan fiction, and you can make them awesome! You see what I'm getting at, right? I'm passionate about the Elder Scrolls, of course, and I'm having fun talking about this. But ultimately, what I'm trying to tell you is that mods are not canon. And that's a good thing, because you're freed from those restrictions. You can have something that is lore-friendly, and being lore-friendly can use out-of-game lore. And that's okay, but we never say that lore-friendly is synonymous with canon. I like him. I don't agree with him on everything, but he knows enough about the lore for me not to hate him. All of his videos are opinion pieces and tr are treated as such. Yes, yes, and yes is my personal interpretation of the lore. <clears throat> as with every YouTuber, someone claiming to be a lore beard, Binky the Clown, uh, take his words with a grain of salt. Try a barrel of salt. In fact, down here, salt is a way of life. Obviously, the environment down here is all salt. The, the ceiling's salt, the floor's salt, the walls are salt, and to an extent, the air is salt. And you breathe that in, and you can constantly taste the salt. Always cross-reference or ask for sources when in doubt. But, but if you have to cross-reference or ask for sources, let, let me ask you a question. Doesn't that mean that there is some kind of authority on what is true and what is false, and therefore not everything is subjective if you need to ask for sources? If everything was subjective, then sources would be worthless. But in reality, we all know, we all know that there is authority on what is true and what is false in the Elder Scrolls. And it's inconsistent as hell. And we use band-aids like the unreliable narrator and dragon breaks to explain away those design differences in each game. I mean, one Dragon Break would be fucking awesome. If you actually made a game, an entire Elder Scrolls... Let's just say that Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind wasn't about the living gods, but instead it was about dealing with the after effects of the Warp in the West. Like, that would have made the Warp in the West worth doing. It would be like the Spell Plague in the Forgotten Realms. I mean, if you haven't already read the, um, the novels that talk about the Spell Plague and the after effects of the Spell Plague... By the way, I love, um, it, it, it's not nothing to do with the spell plague, but it, check out the the Orc King, the Pirate King, and the Ghost King. They're, they're three novels by um, Salvador. They're, they're great. Um, Forgotten Realms books. Either way, <clears throat> so l let's continue here. Um, he's not a dick about his opinions. Yes, I am. I'm being a dick right now. Seriously, uh, he's matter-of-factly about them because you're watching his videos to see my opinion. Exactly, exactly. I mean, if I didn't stand here, and I didn't put on a presence, then I wouldn't be able to sell you my products, if I, if I were still in sales. In this case, I wouldn't be able to convey my emotions, which is really me having fun. People take it as being angry, or being pissed off, or being, but I am legitimately enjoying myself by articulating my position. And if I come off as the village idiot, and I still entertain someone in the process, then I've done my job. If I piss some people off, and they come to my video to dislike it, and tell me what a terrible person I am, then I've still done my job. The worst thing you can do is simply click away from the video and never comment 
never thumbs up or thumbs down, no interaction, but by responding to me, by, by engaging with me, you have justified the presence of this video. And in return, I have justified the presence of your thread about me. Because ultimately, it's a symbiotic relationship where I make videos, you talk about me, and I talk about you. Damn, that's a low quality image you got there. He's actually streaming on Twitch right now. He usually answers, as long as they aren't shitty. <laughs> yeah, I, I do sometimes give shitty answers. But I, I usually try to just make an opinion piece video, and then when someone asks a question that has been asked a billion times, I'll link them or tell them to go check out this particular video, you know? Like, where do you think Elder Scrolls Six is gonna be? Check out my ideal Elder Scrolls Six video, you know? I, I typically do that. He's on Warframe last I saw, yeah. I am, I have been on a week bender of Warframe. I've, I'm having a lot of fun with that, but today, today is Morrowind and uh, Arena. Elder Scrolls won the Arena, absolutely. Well, let's continue. So you watched a couple of his introductory videos on his channel. You don't like him in the slightest. He sounded decent in the beginning and saying how everyone's opinions are valid and all that. Then he starts criticizing what he considers ridiculous and it doesn't matter what other people think. Code is bullshit. Yeah. No, no, no. You have to understand something. Saying that Coda is legitimate, saying that Coda is canon, is wrong. But saying canon doesn't exist is like saying that soldier pointing a gun at me doesn't exist. That Zenimax Online Studios getting their lawyers ready to take down my shit because I sold a novel that had Elder Scrolls in it because I thought it was an open sourced lore. By the way, open source? You can sell. No, seriously. You can sell open source stuff. That's why it's open source. You can make professional products out of it. But, unfortunately, you would have to change a whole lot and it wouldn't be the Elder Scrolls anymore. You know, uh, we resemble but are legally distinct from the Lollipop Guild. You gotta you got do that. You gotta resemble but it'd be legally distinct if you want to sell your coda. And, yes, ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Gross profit Groffit. He thinks he has a lore beard, Binky the Clown, when it's more a lore stubble or lore peach fuzz. Yeah, Binky the Clown. Y you're all Binky the Clown to me now. And there you have it. A look into the Elder Scrolls lore Facebook group. That is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash TES lore. Please do not harass them. No, no, seriously, don't harass them. Um... I would, however, like to hear comments about, uh, you know, lore beards. I, I, I want to discuss the concept of lore beards in the comment section and what you think the word means to you. I had a lot of fun reading that comment section and I thought I'd share it with all of you. Now, I'm off to go play Elder Scrolls Won the Arena on a live stream because that amuses me as well. Thank you all for watching. Check the links on screen for more content. And I will see y'all next time. Could it be lore? Could it be lore? Could it be law? Could it be law? Could it be law? Could it be law?